What's up, people? Um, gonna take a look at some of the young players on this team, as we do every week on Tuesday. But uh, first, Hawks Nest stream tonight. Gonna start at about 7 o'clock, so be there. Gonna be on my channel. The uh, stream's already been prepared, so hop on over there around 7 o'clock. We're gonna talk about the team for a couple hours, talk about this big win we just had, maybe do some trade deadline stuff. So, everyone be ready for that. All right. Let's uh, take a look at some of these young players, starting with the offensive linemen like we usually do. Um, things are still good. Cross played a decent game. His PFF grade boosted up about half a point. He did allow a few pressures. I think he allowed a sack. But overall, his game was solid, effective. Uh, there was a cut-up on Twitter someone did of uh, Thibodeau rushing the passer in that game, and he was mostly stymied. He didn't do a whole lot. So the tackles held up in general, both of them. So it, it wasn't the greatest pass protection game we've ever had, but some of that was because of the blitz. I think the tackles mostly acquitted themselves. Same with Abe Lucas. His PFF grade dropped a little bit, but it's still in that 65 range where we can say he's doing exceptionally well for a third-round rookie. Uh, I think he allowed a pressure. His run block grade was actually the main reason why his grade dipped a little bit. His pass protection seemed like it was fine. But, um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a good game run blocking for the Seahawks in general. It wasn't a good game running in general. So I guess that kind of makes sense. But you're still talking about Charles Cross, 21-year-old, who's got a PFF grade a little above 60. Like that, That's kind of like the line where PFF is saying this is a player who is a net positive. 21-year-old tackle starting his rookie year net positive. And you have Abe Lucas who is beyond a net positive. He's like genuinely approaching good player territory. Um, something special going on there, so all good news there. Uh, mostly good news also with Boye Mafe. His grade dipped a little bit. I don't really know why. Like, he had a sack. I know it was kind of a weird sack where Daniel Jones... I mean, I looking at that sack, it's like Daniel Jones was like a character in Madden and the controller got disconnected, so he's just standing there. I don't know what that was, but he did get the sack, and we played the run extremely well in that game. So I don't really know what he did wrong, but uh, even if you, even if he did, this is still a player who is adding positive elements to this team at a very young age where I was not expecting a ton from him his rookie year. And, and maybe, it's not like he's on pace for like 12 sacks or anything. I'm not saying that, but he is out there grinding in a way I wasn't expecting his rookie year. So that's all great news, the offensive line. Young guys playing great. Mafe playing great. Uh, the offensive skill players, Ken Walker, not his best game. I don't think he really did that much wrong. I think it was just one of those things where uh, he... I, I don't know exactly how you would put it. It was just there wasn't a lot of holes for him. The offensive line didn't do a great job, especially the interior of the offensive line. Seemed like it was kind of weak in that game. Got bullied a little bit. So I don't really put a lot of it on Ken Walker. Uh, he got what he could for the most part. He had the game-clinching touchdown. He, he continues to be an exciting part of this offense. Um, he's up to almost 100 touches, almost 500 yards, and five touchdowns. Now, obviously, we didn't know Penny was going to go down this year, or maybe we did. If you're being straight honest, I think a lot of people maybe would have called that one. But um, Walker being this productive is still really exciting, and... Over and over again, watching this Giants game, I kept thinking to myself, he's about to bust one. And there were a couple times where it felt like he was a fingernail away from busting it. Didn't happen, but you know he has it in him because he's done it a few times already this year. So he'll have games like this where he's grinding out like two and a half to three yards a carry. And then boom, 70 yards, he's gone. And that changes the complexion of the whole game. Uh, Dariq Young played, like, a few snaps. Maybe it was, like, one snap, actually. I think it was four. Actually, Kay Johnson had the one. So, uh, Dariq Young, basically all he does is block when he goes out there. His grade actually took a little bit of a dip in this game. And the fact that his PFF grade can dip significantly in a game where he played four snaps, I mean, that tells you how, few, how little he's played this year. But he's out there. He's out there. I don't got much to say. Other than that, he's out there. Uh, D. Eskridge, I think he had one catch for three yards. I think he had a drop. And he continues to just kind of exist. 
PFF grade took a little bit of a dip, probably because of the drop. And um, in a game where you did see Lockett play a little less, you did see Metcalf play a little less, it was an opportunity for Eskridge to do something of significance, and he couldn't. He just, he didn't have it. So we're not headed in a good direction there, I guess, is what can be said about that. I think we all know that. I don't think I'm breaking news to anybody when I say that he, he th- th- things are not going in a good direction with Eskridge, but... Um, I think he's going to have an opportunity or several opportunities down the stretch of this season. I will say that because the Lockett and Metcalf injury situations are not going to completely go away. So part of me still feels like even by accident, even if it's not necessarily a big um, indicator of him turning his career around, he will have a significant game at some point this year. So that's my prediction. D. Eskridge has a quality game at some point this season. Okay, that's not much, but whatever. We're, we're going to go with it. Defensive backs, Kobe Bryant, he's working his way up, man. He's working his way up every game. He's boosting that PFF grade every game. He's getting a little bit better. It went up almost two points in this game. Had a few tackles. QBR against went down a little bit. Didn't do anything over the top crazy. He didn't force a fumble in this game. But I thought he played well. He played a lot, and he held up. He gave up probably a couple of catches, but I didn't notice anything terrible. I thought that after a rough start, his coverage is starting to round into form here, and we now have several games in a row of him holding up as a nickel corner, which I was really not sure if that was going to happen because I don't think his skill set is for it. We now have extended evidence that he can at least hold his own. It's not amazing, but he's doing all right, out of position. So hopefully at some point he gets a chance to play his natural position. Don't know if it's going to be this year, but he's coming along really nicely and making a lot of positive plays. Uh, Tariq Woolen uh, had a pass pass defensed, uh, gave up a couple things in coverage. He had that one play where I think he tipped the ball and then the dude still caught it, which, I mean, that's just bad luck. I'm not not going to hold that against him. If you get your hand on the ball, it should be incomplete at the minimum, right? So... Woolen did good. He got picked up a couple tackles. Uh, this turnover forced is not from this most recent game. Uh, somebody in the comments actually po- made the point to me that blocking that field goal is kind of like forcing a turnover. So I was like, yeah, you're right. That's a big, that's bigger than a turnover in some ways because you're directly taking points off the board. So I gave him another one, but it's not from this most recent game. Joey Blunt added a tackle on special teams and... He fell on a fumble. He recovered a fumble that was crucial in us eventually winning this game. So he continues to be an important special teamer on this team. And uh, I will see you guys uh, later, though that is the status on some of these rookies and sophomores. See you guys later. Go Hawks.